Please welcome to the TEDx stage, Jenny Fong Lee. I don't hold a PhD or a certificate of intelligence, but I can tell you a story. When I was four years old, I found myself abandoned by the side of the road in a large city in southern China. When I entered this world, I didn't realize that being a girl was a mistake. Um, sorry, pictures. I was a girl, and in the eyes of my biological father, that was not a crime to be left unpunished. I watched, I watched my father drink himself to oblivion and abuse my mother and me with his beer bottles whenever we did not have enough money. We never had enough money or food, and I don't remember a time when he was sober. Why is she not a he? he would demand. The year was 1995, and the one-child policy had been implemented 16 years before. My mother, who loved me, sent me to my stepbrothers to protect me. My stepbrother, who is no older than I am now, kept me for about a year. He didn't give me much food to eat, and I waited outside more nightclubs than I can ever remember. He saw me as a burden, so he took me far away on a train and set me on the side of the road and told me he would be back for me. Stay right here, he said. Here's 50 cents. If you get hungry, buy yourself something to eat, and I will be back. I waited for my brother all day, and sitting next to the rubble, I wondered if the world had turned its back on me. My brother never returned, and eventually a kind rickshaw driver picked me up and took me to the police station, and from there I was handed off to the orphanage. Spent about a year in that place, and when I was hungry, I ate paper. When I cried, I was disciplined with a hand. About a year later, my white, Jewish, Buddhist, gay, adoptive mother, who had learned Mandarin just to be able to communicate with me, traveled to China to bring me home to one of the wealthiest countries in the world, America. This one person picked me up, carried me halfway around the world, and changed the course of my life. Here I am now. This is not a story about me. It is not about tragedy, nor is it about blame. It is about the human experience. My world was shaken, taken, and broken, but it was mended with love, trust, and lots of good food. My mom, who inspires me so much, brought my adopted sisters and me back to China every summer because she believed in the importance of maintaining my Chinese culture and giving back. So, this is also a story about paying it forward. For the past five summers, I've traveled to China to teach English and art in rural schools and orphanages. On one of these trips back, I visited, in one of the foster homes and villages I visited, I spotted a little girl wearing pink. She was sitting in a low, rickety wooden seat, and nothing but her eyes moved. I asked the foster family about this little girl, and they told me, she had cerebral palsy, which meant she couldn't control most of her motor skills. She's hopeless, they told me. But when I looked into this little girl's eyes, I saw life, hope, and promise. She's not hopeless, I told them. Less than a year later, my mom and I had raised enough funds to get the little girl in pink into an orphanage that had access to doctors and physical therapists. Ever summer since then, um, I visited the little girl, and with some medical help, she was able to take her first few steps. As I was, uh, and eventually my mom connect, and I connected her to an American family that brought her into their home and their family. As I was figuring out what to say to you all, one of my mentors asked me, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to bare your soul like this to everyone? And what I believe is that by speaking up, even when my voice wavers, it is empowering not only to myself, but to all the women and children out there who share a similar experience to me. This isn't just a girl problem. It's an everyone, no matter who you are problem. Gender discrimination is a universal crime. In academia, there's this idea, this widely held idea, that there is no such thing as a universal crime. No one offense common to all cultures. For example, infant homicide. In America, the killing of innocent babies is seen as one of the worst offenses. Yet in China, 
No justice was brought to any of those baby girls who died because of gender preference. And what I contend is there should be a universal crime, and that is discrimination and inequality based on gender, our gender. You see, when we kill, oppress, and limit women because of their lack of a Y chromosome, we are preventing seven billion people from economic as well as social growth. Is that not a crime against all of our futures? What is the first question we ask in the birth of a child? Is it a boy or is it a girl? As women, our roles in society are predetermined by our gender, and that is why I am here. I consciously chose Mount Holyoke, an, in, an institution exclusive to women. Here, we are equal. Here, the first question we ask is, what are your dreams? Now, do I think women are better than men? No. Okay, maybe just a little. <laughs> But do I think that the fight for women's rights is still relevant today? Yes. Very much so. So, where do we go from here? It begins with a refusal. It is the refusal of the status quo, a refusal of yesterday's history as tomorrow's future. It begins with us taking that red thread that connects each and every one of us, tugging and saying, hey, we're in this together. It begins with us rewriting the, the history of ourselves, Our, our families and our nations, and it begins by saying that our biological makeup is just one small part of that equation which makes us who we are. But I've got good news. Um, we don't have to wait around. Uh, I don't usually look to Disney Channel for my feminist inspirations, obviously, but there's this wonderful Cheetah Girls song of their idea of how women should be. It goes something like this. I'm a terrible singer, I know it, so please bear with me. Um, I don't want to be like Cinderella, sitting in a dark, cold, dusty cell, waiting for somebody to come and set me free. What the song teaches us is that we don't have to wait around. We can be our own heroines, our own saviors. And, what my, and I'm standing in front of you today, not as a triumph, but as a testament to the power of the human spirit and advocacy. What my story teaches us is that we have come a long way from where we were 15 years ago, but it also tells us that we have yet more work to do because there are still girls out there like me. And even though they are their own heroines, they need mentors, like my mom was to me, like I was to the little girl in pink. I don't have a magic formula for how you can help. That's for you to figure out. But I can tell you this. We have to roll up our sleeves, keep fighting, and continue to help these millions of girls in pink, the other half of the population, which hold up half the blue sky, we all stand under. Thank you. <laughs>